the epistle for this solemnity of St. Joseph the Worker is from St. Paul's letter to the Colossians. Brethren, have charity, which is the bond of perfection. Let the peace of Christ rejoice in your hearts, wherein also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. All whatsoever you do in word or in work, do all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Whatsoever you do, do it from the heart, as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that you receive of the Lord the reward of inheritance. Serve ye the Lord Christ. Continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. That time coming into his own country, he taught them in their synagogues, so that they wondered and said, How came this man by this wisdom and miracles? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother named Mary, and his brothers James and Joseph, and Simon and Jude? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence therefore hath he all these things? And they were scandalized in his regard. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. And he wrought not many miracles there because of their unbelief. This is the words of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, this Mass is offered for the worthy intentions of Courtney Wessinger. This Gospel today, we see that Jesus has taught with authority and with wisdom in the synagogue in his hometown of Nazareth. His goodness towards all all the healings and miracles and so forth has already made him somewhat famous. But the Nazarenes who had known him and his family their whole lives were scandalized. Jesus, after all, was one of them. So where is a carpenter's son? So where did such wisdom and miracles come from? St. John Chrysostom points out that they should have honored Jesus all the more because of his humble origins, because his, his abilities could only have come from God. Instead, they envy him, as that capital sin of envy again, popping up straight from the garden to everybody's lives, envy. And they uh, perhaps they envied the miracles he had worked elsewhere. He'd already been to Capernaum and to work some miracle, healing miracles there. But little did they... I'm cutting this thing off. Little did they know of the mysteries that had flourished in their midst for about 30 years. The incarnation, Jesus' obedient, excuse me, Joseph's obedience to the words of the angel on several occasions that we're very familiar with, and the presence of God's Son in the humble carpenter's family. Joseph is sometimes called the silent apostle for his part. He's the epitome of a strong silent type, as used to be an expression. There's no need to announce the favors that he had from God or to make a big deal out of it. Uh, his strength uh, had no reason to be loud and brash. What reserve and recollection both he and Mary must have shown for all those years. You know, and there's something inside of us that just, when there's some really great fortune or good thing happens to us, we almost want to sing like that cartoon character did that time. I know something I won't tell, I won't tell, <laughs> you know. Well, 
that was a long time ago. In any event, it's his feast, so I'll talk about Joseph primarily. He's described in the Gospels as righteous or just, meaning that he obeyed the law and he was a practitioner of his faith. He evidently had several things, according to Father Gabriel, uh, that were perfect for his role in this great mystery. First is complete confidence in God. Like Mary, when he asked a question or when he had questions, all he needed was enough clarification of his role in this great drama to respond very promptly. Whatever the angel said, if you read the scriptures, the angel said this, like Simon says again, the angel says this, you do it, boom, right away. Gets up in the middle of the night, off to Egypt they go. So uh, he had docility, secondly, which is a disposition to learn and to be guided or led by God and his angels. The necessary prerequisite for this is humility, which is precisely knowing our place before God. Father Gabriel says he has a deep faith and that led to a blind obedience. When you think about it, he's very unusual for the people of Israel, or for that matter, for the human race. He's extraordinary in his willingness, his promptness to obey, and his willingness to do so. Uh, we go back to the history of the people of Israel in particular, they simply show us ourselves. Uh, how many times did the Lord do great things for them and they agreed to obey every little word he said in the, in the law of God and then of course they fell away, they didn't do it. How often does any people, any individual do exactly the same thing? Thirdly, Joseph's entire, had a complete consecration to his mission it was entrusted to him by God. You could see there was a mission. It was uh, quite a bit beyond what would be the, his ordinary state of life. And, uh, and he rose to the occasion with the help of God. And so indeed, we are called to do the same way, to be the same thing. To recognize and accept the mystery and the obscurity in our lives as being the setting of God's manifestation of his will for us. We have a lot of mystery in our lives and I think people, particularly in the modern era, are uncomfortable with that. People always are uncomfortable, but particularly in this era because we like to feel so much that we've got things under control in our lives, our societies, in the church, whatever it may be. And we don't, we really don't. Nobody has it all together, as my seminary rector used to be fond of saying. Uh, so we're called to recognize this and accept this mystery, the obscurity, all the doubts that the devil whips up from these things, that God is actually there. God can employ any person or circumstance to make us know and to bring us to execute his divine will. When it, that statement is said a little bit wryly because uh, uh, the person or persons, the circumstances can be good, bad, or ugly as the movie title goes. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, whatever it may be, the Lord wants us to respond promptly to what his will would be somebody who we find annoying or we have trouble with in some way comes to us about something or with some need he calls us to try to be of help and uh, if we if we uh, have something uh, that someone has done to us we need to man up and forgive them and if we have done something wrong to someone else again we need to man up and ask for forgiveness. He wants us to be like him, like Jesus. Sacrificial in our love and concern for others 
and totally dedicated to the truth, fully alive and life-giving. This is who Joseph was. And he is, he is our model not only of manhood, but our, our model of discipleship, as is his bride, Mary. All that we do, no matter how ordinary, should be done for the glory of God. We say, well, how do you do that? Ask ourselves, we need to take a little time to be recollected, ask ourselves these type of questions. What am I meant to do in life? What is the best way to accomplish it? What is my state in life, of course, and for the young people, what will be my state in life? Where does God want me? And, uh, and how do I fulfill this purpose, however humble it might be? If we have a, a humble calling, if we don't have many talents for getting rich or anything like that, the Lord still wants us to be happy, and most of all, He wants us to be holy. And if we have high intelligence and all kinds of skills to become rich and famous, the Lord wants us to remember where it came from and to make sure that we share the benefits of whatever we do. We're meant to come in. One thing he, all, he always wants us to do is make a difference for the good in the world, whether it's only in our family or whether it's beyond. If it's in only our family, you'll find that it makes a difference beyond the family. We are, after all, those who try to respond to his basic command. Do this in memory of me. Is not this the carpenter's son? May God bless you. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.